overseeing record rental prices across the United States. A percent increase in rent on average in just the last two years. Giving a break in home prices. And we still have high prices of entry for homes. You know, there is a phrase we use in, back in the country. It says, being without food, but don't be without uh, shelter or home. You know, shelter is very important than food, you know. That's very true. Yes. My name is Fazal Rabi. So yeah, I born in Afghanistan. I you know I start uh, to be an interpreter. You know, trying to help alongside the army, the armed coalition forces. And that's why you know I got selected as one of the uh, special immigrant to come here to the United States just to uh, to be safe. At least have a, a hope for my kids to have a bright future. When I was 15, my mother passed away. And then a year later, at the age of 16, I entered the American foster care system. It became a challenge navigating where I could see as home. I've pulled myself out of some pretty bad spots. But one thing I couldn't get around was the fact that I needed housing and what I was making was just not cutting it. I got a job and one of the team members was telling me that don't be surprised when you get your first, you know, check, you know. Because no matter how hard I was working, I couldn't afford some time, you know. You know working, working as much as you can work, you know, like three jobs. In college, I would do evening classes and then I would work during the day, Monday through Friday, and then I would do my second job 16 hours every weekend because I did not know where I was going to end up. There was one time like I didn't see my son for a week with the same house, you know. Especially that was the first two years. Imagine, you know, you do whatever for your kids and you don't get to see your kids and your kids like, can't see my dad. It was really hard. You think about basic human needs, food, clothing, and shelter, right? We're talking about shelter. How can a family grow and prosper if they don't have a home that they can afford in a decent neighborhood? It's foundational for, for family growth. In the past several years, the situation has become more urgent than we've seen even 10 years ago. There are so many American families that don't have enough income to afford rental housing, much less transition to home ownership. Half of the renters in this country are what we call cost burden. They are paying more than 30% of their income for housing. It has implications for people's lives, it has implications for where they work, whether they can afford to be in a market because uh, they can't afford the rents there. It has implications for how their children live. So we need to do more on the supply side. We need to find a way to build more affordable rental housing. The low income housing tax credit allows investors who are seeking some break on their income tax bill to invest money in housing and get credits that then will write down their tax bill. And the result is funds to build additional low-income housing. Now I know that uh, I can enjoy the life and you know, I've been with the kids. Still working, but come home. And when I have time, we work together with them. So that's how we build this. You know, we want to make sure that they progress in their studies, so uh, they can have a good uh, future and a brighter future. And so we both try and add to the supply, and then we provide more money on the demand side. On what we call the demand side. The Section 8 vouchers are the primary way to help people afford housing. 
vouchers are a way for a resident to get into an apartment that costs more than what they can afford with their 30% of budget allocated to housing. The voucher program changes the trajectory of our futures. There definitely would have been a lot more detours, a lot more failures, a lot more uncertainty. I am currently searching for houses, but my goal is by the end of the year to be a homeowner. Without the voucher program, I can't really imagine where I would be right now. I think it's important to build on the programs that we have. The problems are too urgent to start from scratch. First off, I think housing is a nonpartisan issue, but I certainly believe that the bipartisan approach to solving it is what needs to happen. I would go further and say, every social goal that we want for the people of the United States, better education, better health care, more stable family environments, revolve around housing. Because I'm just like, if you hear my story, you know, it would change their life. It gives people roots, gives people a foundation to start from. A precondition for making progress on almost every social goal that we have in the country is to have a decent place to say, tonight I'm going home to rest.